Hello, welcome back to a new video. If you've not come onto my channel before, then my name's Katie and I'm an artist living in the south of England. And today I'm just going to talk through this painting which I did for day 148 of my daily art challenge. And this is going to be a painting of the conservatory water in Central Park. So it's like a man-made lake where people put um, like model boats on and they can remote control them around and stuff. So it was just a really nice place to stumble upon in New York. And this is from a trip I went with my sister and best friend quite a few years ago now. And I have never painted this before. I've done a few drawings of New York in my sketchbook and I've done a few scrapbooking pages, but I've never painted this view. So I wanted to paint something large on this day and decided to use my A3 sketchbook. I picked this up from London Graphic Centre and I'll pop a link down below so you can see where I bought it and what kind of paper it is. But it's relatively thick paper. Um, I wouldn't say it's like super thick, but it's more like cartridge paper. So it did buckle a little bit, but considering how much water you can see I'm kind of throwing at it, I was pretty impressed. And I'm just using gouache for this, and that's a mixture of Winsor & Newton and De La Rowney. And then I'm also using this brush, which I don't often use, but it holds a lot of water. And I bought this from Japan, it's really cheap, it's just from Daiso, which is like their pound store over there. And it's supposed to be for calligraphy, it's a calligraphy brush, so you're supposed to use it with ink. But it's not a very high quality, obviously it was very, very cheap and so the it's quite scratchy and the bristles fell out a couple of times and it's not perfect but it does hold a lot of water so that's why i wanted to use it today and experiment a bit with it you can see here like how much water i'm throwing on the page um and you can see it's buckling and wrinkling up but now i've flattened it out after it's dried it's not too bad and i think like once i put it in a frame i think it would be perfect um like you wouldn't be able to tell so I'm using a lot of water, which is generally how I use gouache. I know, I don't know if I'm, I think I say that wrong. I think it's gouache, but um, I use it with a lot of water and I know a lot of people use it in a more opaque way, which is great, especially for like layering. But generally for my first layer, this is exactly how I approach painting. So here I'm just going to put in some of the reflections on the water. I often struggle a little bit with the reflections. I find it a little bit hard to communicate that it is a reflection rather than just, you know, more trees. But I think the view of this reference photo, which I'm using, really helps because you've got that like swoop in the front, which is clearly the edge of some water. And I think that really helps to, like when you're viewing the painting to tell you that this is reflections. And you'll also see that I'm using these like blobby marks which again I think helps translate the whole look into a reflection because it's clearly water. So I'm trying to keep this bit quite abstract. I'm not going with the like fluffy brush strokes which I use for the trees above. I'm just using these sort of horizontal marks just to try and show the ripples in the water. And I'm looking at my reference lesson less here um, just because I've kind of got the base layer down and I can see the trees and I'm just trying to translate the colours into the water and obviously this doesn't have to be perfect so I'm definitely looking at my reference less and I tend to just use references as like a starting point nowadays and then I don't just copy it completely. I'll use it as a base and then I'll just do my own thing from there. So this is just a mix of yellows, greens and browns, so quite a muted palette. Um, but you'll see later on I do bump up the saturation a little bit and add a lot of coloured pencil details. I think it's really interesting uh, filming my process because when I watch it back I can see that my marks weren't super confident. Like you can see me sort of being quite cautious with the brush and so it's really interesting to me because I don't really realise it when I'm painting but when I watch it back I can see that they are quite um, like placed in a purposeful way and it's not like I'm just going straight in with the painting which is kind of what it feels like when I'm doing it but when I watch it back I can see I'm very cautious with it and 
and you can see me sort of pausing and thinking about where I'm going to place the paint. So moving on to the next stage now which is all the details and this is definitely one of my favourite parts of each painting because it feels like it really brings it together. So I'm using a smaller brush here and thicker gouache this time because I'm not using it in such a large area and I'm just placing in like trunks of the trees and little leaf details just to bring these into focus a bit more because where I use such a big thick brush and a lot of water it needs a bit more uh, focus just to make it clear that they are trees and just to add a bit more detail which I prefer in my paintings. And like I said I don't really look at the reference here so generally this is just what I think looks right and just sort of going with my gut in terms of adding in shadows on the trees. I'm trying to practice trees a bit more. Um, I tend to paint them but I don't really look at what they look like and so I think sometimes the branches and like the way I do the trees doesn't look very realistic and I think that's the case here as well because obviously I was using, wasn't really looking at my reference so and they're not perfect like they obviously look a bit unnatural but definitely something I want to practice a bit more and I think adding in this shadow really helped bring it together a little bit and I think with paintings like you may feel like it's not very good like at this stage I wasn't really enjoying it but the more you layer up and I know like obviously there's a point where you can overwork it but I knew that if I kept adding to this it it would help it and so that's what I did I just kept going with like more leaves and shadows and I I think eventually it really does work as a piece so here I'm using some white gouache to paint on some of the boats which are on the boating lake and I do this a couple of times, which I haven't shown in this video, but the whenever I use white gouache, it tends to use or need a couple of layers just because it doesn't come out as opaque as I want the first time. And when it first goes on, it looks absolutely fine, but it kind of sunk into this paper a bit and I wanted it really white to stand out. So I do do a couple of layers of paint and I'm actually using a new white um, gouache, which I got from Amazon. Generally I use a Winsor & Newton white and that comes in a 14ml tube, that's about um, £4 a tube. So I found this jar of Talon's paint on Amazon and I've used Talon's sketchbooks before but I've never used their paint. And this was a 50ml glass jar of white paint and it was only £6.50 so um, a much more affordable way to get white gouache because I use it so much. I basically mix all of my colours with it because I do quite like a muted palette and so I'm always running out of white gouache and it's the same in my Himi um, palette as well. That The white in there is completely gone. So I'm using it and testing it out over the next few weeks but so far I'm really enjoying it and I'm really impressed with like the texture, it's not super chalky or anything and I think like going forward I'll definitely use it and try out the other Talon's colours as well. So now I'm going in with my pencil details and if you've seen any of my other artwork or my videos you'll know I really love this stage. It really adds more details and like more colour as well because I tend to use them for like finishing touches and adding on the final layer. And I added on these colourful bits on the boats, which, you know, it wasn't necessarily these colours in the reference, but I really love the pop of colours it adds because obviously it's a very green and natural coloured piece. And I really think that those pops of colours from the boats really help add some focus and, and a bit more life to the piece. The overall look of this painting is quite soft. Um, you can see like with the textures there with the pencils, it's very smudgy and I really like the way that looks there. And I'm also adding on a lot more like of these blob marks on the waters. So I'm just sort of keeping them horizontal on the water because um, that's the way like the ripples move and I think that helps. Whereas if I went vertical with the strokes, I think it would ruin the whole illusion. And I'm also adding on these little details, which I really love doing, um, which is why I love drawing buildings so much because I love adding on these little windows and I also use some Ecoline brush pens and some uh, Tombow markers just to just to add some shading onto these at the back and then coming to the foreground and just adding on these tiny details so a bit of shadow 
um, the marks where you can see like the concrete joins and I really think that really helped bring it together and made it feel more realistic. So here's the final piece, I really hope you enjoyed watching my process and as always if you have any questions please do let me know down below. I really hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you soon with a new video. See you later!